How many of you have ever heard the word repentance? All right? Uh, we know that John the Baptist, when he came preaching, it says he came preaching a message of repentance. Jesus preached on repentance. Paul preached on repentance. The disciples preached on repentance. So we've all heard the word repentance, but it's another thing to understand what does that mean and what is true repentance. So that's what I want to talk to you about today. Again, this is Fred Kropp coming to you from the Healing Rooms here in Santa Maria, California. And uh, I just want you to know that I'm just excited about, I get so many messages from so many of you saying how much the messages are helping you and encouraging you and strengthening you. And I want you to know that I have a YouTube channel and on my YouTube channel, I have over 300 videos that are designed to equip you, strengthen you, help you, heal you, encourage you. Uh, there's just something for everybody there. And so I'd encourage you to go to my YouTube channel, Fred Kropp, K-R-O-P-P. -P. When you get there, click subscribe, click the bell, and click like. And guess what? That will cause it to go to more and more people so we can help others. All right. So let me just start off here by reading a scripture about John the Baptist and about repentance, and then we're going to jump right into today's teaching, all right? Here it says in Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 through 3, it says, In those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness, wilderness of Judea, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he of that who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah when he said, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. So let's pray and let's jump right in here, ask the Holy Spirit to help us. So Father, once again, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, your love, for your great salvation. We thank you for Jesus and all he's done for us. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, we acknowledge you and we ask you to speak to us. Lead us into all truth, I pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now notice here, before Jesus came, this man named John the Baptist, they call him John the Baptist because he was baptizing people, came. And it was said of him that he is, this is the one who, it says, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. And what was his message? The message was a message of repentance. So how do we prepare the way of the Lord for our life? It starts with repentance. So if you want God working in your life, you have, to, you have to begin to understand that repentance is a foundation that you need in, to activate in your life, in your everyday life. Now, here in 2 Chronicles 7.14, it says this, If my people who call by my name will humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and notice this, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin, and I'll heal their land. So if we're going to see God healing our land, and how many of you know that our land needs healing, it starts with repentance. Now, Jesus also preached on repentance. In fact, the first is when Jesus first started preaching the gospel, Matthew 4, 17 says this, From that time, Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In Mark 4, uh, chapter 1, verses 14 and 15, Jesus says this. Jesus said, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. On the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit was poured out, and it says that when the Holy Spirit was poured out, it says the Holy Spirit brings conviction. It says that 3,000 people responded to the conviction of the Holy Spirit, and they said it says this, it says they were pierced to the heart. This is Acts 2, 37, 38. It says they were pierced to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brethren, what shall we do? So they said, okay, we feel this conviction. What shall we do? Here's what J Peter said. He said, repent and let each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So what was the first thing? So here we have John the Baptist preaching repentance to prepare the way of the Lord, Jesus preaching the gospel and saying the first words of the gospel are repent. And then Peter on the day of Pentecost, when the people are convicted by the presence of the Holy Spirit, the first words that Peter says to them is you need to repent, right? So then the disciples, we see the disciples preaching repentance in Mark chapter 6, verse 7. It says, Jesus summoned the 12 
and sent them out in pairs. And he gave them authority over unclean spirits. And it says they went out in verse 12. It says and they went out preaching that men should repent. repent. And the apostle Paul preached on repentance. So you're seeing as I'm, why am I saying all these people preaching on repentance? Because I want you to see that repentance is a primary theme in the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's a primary action that we must take if we're going to become right with the Father and, uh, and, uh, and receive salvation. So the Apostle Paul preached on repentance. In Acts chapter 20, verse 20, 21, it says this, how, he says, how I did not shrink back from you, declaring you anything that was profitable and teaching you publicly and from house to house, solemnly testifying to both Jews and Greeks, repentance toward God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. So it's repentance followed by faith. In Acts 17, Paul says this. He says, times of In times of ignorance, God overlooked. But now he commands all people everywhere to repent. So repentance is a main theme in the Gospels. And then, as I mentioned in my last video, when I talked about making sure you have a solid foundation, the first part of our foundation in the Christian life is repentance. It's, it's Hebrews 6.1. It says, Therefore, let us leave the elementary doctrine of Christ and go on to maturity, not laying again the foundation of, and here's the first part of the foundation, repentance from dead works. So we are called to repent. Well, what are some things that would lead us to repent? So those of you that are jumping on right now, I'm talking about true repentance and how repentance is a major foundation and a major thing that we must have in our life. It's not a one-time thing. I repented one time 20 years ago, but it's an ongoing thing that we do when anytime we are confronted with something that we realize we're sinning or we're not right with God or we're not doing something God's way, the answer is to repent, okay? So what are some things that lead us into repentance? Well, first off, the conviction of the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 16, verse 8, Jesus said he's going to send the Holy Spirit, and it says he will convict the world concerning sin, righteousness, and judgment to come. And then, as I mentioned on the day of Pentecost, when uh, Peter preached the gospel, it says they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the brothers, what shall we do? So you see, the conviction of the Holy Spirit came. Now, don't, the conviction is not condemnation. God didn't come to condemn us. That's why it says in Romans 8, verse 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. So God doesn't come to condemn you, but the Holy Spirit does come to convict you, okay? Uh, condemnation, you know, you know, causes you to feel like I'm a failure, I'm no good, I'm never going to make it, I'm not going to... But conviction merely points out an area where God wants to bring about his salvation in that area of your life. Another thing that brings uh, repentance is godly sorrow. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10 says this, Godly sorrow produces repentance, leading to salvation, not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. So godly sorrow leads to repentance. Another one is the fear of the Lord. In Philippians 2, 12, it says this, Therefore, my brother... Beloved, uh, uh, as you have obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, Paul says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So here we have uh, the fear of the Lord will lead you to repentance. Another one is, sounds interesting, right? It's the goodness of God. God's goodness leads us to repentance. That's Romans 2. 2 verse 4 it says, And do you despise the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? And then finally, what I've discovered is that repentance is actually a gift of God. In other words, you really want God to grant you repentance because repentance is what's going to lead to change in your life. And so here in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 24 through 26, it says this, And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, Paul says, but be kind to everyone, able to teach, patient, enduring evil, correcting his opponents or those that oppose themselves with gentleness. 
if God may perhaps grant them repentance leading to the knowledge of the truth, that they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil, having been captured by him to do his will. Now, if you heard what I just read to you, Paul says that repentance that is something that God grants to us. I would say if there's any prayer you want to be praying over your life is, Lord, grant me repentance. Because here he says, God will grant them repentance. They will acknowledge the truth. They will come to their senses and they will escape from the snare of the devil. So one of the first steps in deliverance is repentance. That's right. As we repent, then it gives the devil, it takes away the devil's foothold in our life, his control in our life, and it breaks us free from the control of the devil. Now, it leads me to one other question, and that is, what is true repentance? So if there is a true repentance, then there must be a false repentance. And I believe that a lot of repentance that people uh, experience in the church today is a false repentance. And we need to understand what is true repentance. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 9-10, through 10, Paul says this. He says, Now I rejoice... Not that you were made sorrowful, but that you were made sorrowful to the point of repentance. For you were made sorrowful according to the will of God, so that uh, you might not suffer loss of, in anything through us. For the sorrow that is according to the will of God produces repentance without regret, leading to salvation. But the sorrow of the world produces death. So what does he mean? What is a false repentance? Well, false repentance is where you just, I just feel bad that I got caught, right? You get caught in some kind of sin in your life and you feel bad about it. That is not true repentance because if you don't have a desire to change or to stop the sin of behavior, you just feel sorry that you got caught. That is not true repentance. False repentance also is just praying a prayer for forgiveness without making a decision to forsake and stop doing your sinful behavior. And you'll see why when I give the definition of repentance. Another thing, false repentance is not, is not just not liking the consequences of our sin without dealing with the root cause of our sin. So again, it's like I got caught and I don't like the, you know, or I sin and I don't like the consequences of my sin, but I don't really want to deal with the root cause. I don't really want to repent. False repentance also blames other people for why we do what we do. So listen, if you say, you know, uh, yeah, I repent, but it's because of my family background, or it's because the way they treated me, or it's because of my environment, or it's because, and you start to make excuses for your sin, that's not true repentance. So it's a false repentance. False repentance will keep you from God's salvation and destine you for hell. So nobody wants to go to hell. So what we need to do is have to, uh, to understand what is true repentance. So again, if there's true repentance, there's a false repentance. Now, in the Old Testament, so we have two words for repentance, one in the Old Testament and one in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, the Old Testament word for repentance means to feel sorry, to regret, and to turn away from evil, or it means to turn around. It means I'm going this direction. When I repent, I turn around and go the opposite direction. That's why it says in Hebrews chapter 6, it says repent. It says repentance from death, dead works, and faith toward God. So it's turning away from your sin and turning to God. So the Old Testament uh, word for repentance means to turn around. In the New Testament, it is the Greek word metanoia, which means to change your mind about something in such a way that it causes you to change your behavior. So in, it says in uh, uh, Proverbs 23, uh, verse 7, it says, as he thinks, so he is. So you put these together, uh, the New Old Testament word for repentance, the New Testament word for repentance. Old Testament says to turn around, to change your behavior. New Testament says to change your mind in such a way that it changes your behavior. So we need that. We need both of those. We need to turn around and not, we can't have repentance in our own strength and power, but we need a change in our mind. That's why it says in Romans 12 to do not be conformed to this world, Paul says, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So let me give you some definitions that I found uh, from different people about repentance. Here's one of them. 
Repentance may be defined as the voluntary change in the mind of the sinner whereby he turns from sin. It involves a change of view, a change of feeling, and a change of purpose. That's Partington. Uh, Chalmers, another person, wrote this. He said it describes that deep and radical change whereby a sinner turns from the idols of self and sin to God and devotes every moment in the inner and outer man to the captivity of his obedience. And then my favorite one is by Charles Finney, who is a man who was a lawyer who God met him on out in the woods one day, and he became a man that God used to bring about the second great awakening in America. Here is Charles Finney's definition of repentance. Charles says, It implies an intellectual and hearty giving up of all controversy with God upon all and every point. It implies that a conviction that God is wholly right and the sinner is wholly wrong and a thorough and hearty abandonment of all excuses and apologies for sin. So let me do that one again and break it down a little bit. It implies an intellectual and hearty giving up of all controversy with God upon all and every point. So it's saying, God, I'm not going to argue with you. You're right. I'm wrong. You're right. I have sinned. Okay. And so it says a conviction that God is wholly right and the sinner wholly wrong and a thorough and hearty abandonment of all excuses and apologies for sin. So you have, the, and again, I can't go into it, but the tale of two kings were King Saul and King David. King Saul was confronted with his sin, but he kept passing the buck. He kept saying that he was confronted by Samuel the prophet and said, why didn't you do the will of the Lord? He says, well, I did do it, but it's the people. They're, they're the ones that, you know, I feared the people. And, I, and, I, and so he makes excuses. David, when he's confronted with, in my mind, a much greater sin of adultery and murder, when he was confronted by the prophet, he immediately says, I have sinned. He didn't blame anybody else. He didn't blame Bathsheba because she was out there taking a bath and he saw her. He didn't blame that. He didn't blame somebody else. He accepted responsibility. So repentance involves taking responsibility for your sin. Here's a summary of what repentance is, true repentance. Repentance is the informing and changing of the mind, the stirring and direction of the emotions to urge the required change and the action of a yielded will in turning the whole man away from sin and to God. Let me read that one more time. Repentance is the informing and changing of the mind, stirring and direction of the emotions to urge the required change. In other words, there's a you're emotionally you're you're pained so much in your emotions you realize I have to change. There's no other choice. And the action of a yielded will, I choose to turn away from sin and to turn to God. Well, all right, how do I know if I've truly repented? Let me just end with this. Well, if you've truly repented, so again, we're talking about, those of you who are jumping on right now, we're talking about what is true repentance. And repentance is a requirement to make the way for the Lord to work in your life and to be saved. Well, here's some signs that you've truly repented. One, you have a desire to please God and no longer continue in the sinful behavior that you've been practicing. Secondly, you do things to avoid falling back into the same sin. So in other words, if you're caught up in pornography or you're caught up in speaking evil of other situations or something's affecting you, then you remove that thing. It tells us uh, in Luke chapter 3, verse 8, Jesus said, Therefore, bear fruits. Actually, it wasn't Jesus. It was John the Baptist. He said, therefore, bear fruits in keeping with repentance, all right? So he said, there must be some kind of action that you take when you repent. I remember one time when the Lord showed me that I had, before I was a Christian, I had stolen something, uh, and, and I was in another state from where I was, and I just did it as a joke, but the Lord brought it to my mind after I was saved and said, you need to go make it right with those people. So I had to go back and the Bible calls it making restitution. And, and now, again, you do it because God tells you, and God told me to go do this. And so I went back to this store where I had stolen something. And I said, hey, I just want to come. And, and, you know, a couple of years ago, I was here, and I stole this certain item. And, uh, 
And they said, well, you have to go talk to somebody in the back room. So I went in the back room, and this person came out. Can I help you? I said, yeah. I, you know, a couple years ago, I stole something, and I just wanted to come, and I wanted to pay for it and just accept responsibility. And they looked at me, and they walked away, and they went into another room, and they came back with a whole group of people. And they said, can you believe this guy? He just came back. Because he, you know, he says that he stole something and he wants to pay for it. And so they, they're all like, well, why would you want to do that? And I said, well, because I've been saved. I'm, I'm a Christian now. I, I, I was convicted about the fact that I had stolen something. And God showed me I needed to have some action. I needed to go and repent. And I needed to go and make it right. Okay. Now, I'm not saying that God's always going to tell you to do that. But in that case, it did. And you know what it did? I got to share the gospel with a whole bunch of people that I would have never t shared the gospel with. Another verse is 2 Timothy 2.22. It says, Flee youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, and love, and peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So when you repent, you change your behavior. Okay, you start, you get rid of, now, by the way, it's not enough to stop doing something. You've got to start doing something else. That's what he says here in Timothy. He said, flee youthful lusts, okay? So if you're saying, you know what, I'm just going to stop that behavior. I'm going to stop that, you know, sinning. I'm just going to stop that thing that I just keep doing over and over. No, what you need to do is stop and then fill that void with something else, which is pursuing righteousness, faith, and love. So if you were hurting people, now you're going to go out and help people. If you were stealing with, from people, now you're going to go out and make some money and give to people. So you replace the negative behavior with positive behavior. That's included in repentance. And then you feel another sign that you repented is you start filling your life with the opposite. You, the Bible says we overcome evil with good. And then lastly, you develop a hatred for sin. So the Bible says in Psalms 97 verse 10, it says, you who love the Lord hate evil. In uh, Proverbs 8.13, it says the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, arrogance, and the evil way. So notice here, you overcome evil with good. You hate evil. That would be a prayer. Lord, help me to hate the sin that I was caught up in. All right? So I've talked about now what is true repentance. So some of you are sitting there saying, you know what? I think I really need to repent. I don't think I've had true repentance. Well, let me just lead you in a prayer, and, and not just a prayer, but I want you to take action and say, God, I want to have true repentance. I want to turn around, and I want to change my mind about the sin that I've been practicing. So let me pray for you. Father, I pray for everyone watching this video that you will grant them repentance. Lord, we believe, and I believe that repentance is a gift from God because you're for us and not against us. You have our best interests at heart. You're not out to condemn us. You want to help us. You want to set us free from the control of the devil. And so, Lord, I pray that you would grant true repentance in all of our lives. Lord, every day that we have this tool of repentance, that when we find out that we have a controversy with God, we know exactly what to do. We admit that you're right, we're wrong, we have no excuses for our sin, and we ask you to forgive us, and we thank you that you're faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All right. Hey, God bless you. Hey, this, again, this is Fred Kropp coming to you from the Healing Rooms here in Santa Maria. I want you to know that, by the way, I wrote a book called One Simple Act of Obedience, which you can get on Amazon. I would encourage you to go there. And uh, don't forget, I have a YouTube channel. I want to encourage you to go to my YouTube channel and make sure you subscribe, click the bell, and click like. In the meantime, I want you to know that the Father loves you, I love you, and Jesus loves you. Be blessed, my brothers and sisters.